Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, well, it's sort of hard to describe. It is the Wagner's Ring of film scores. It's the Richard Rogers and Robert Russell Bennett Victory at Sea score, which everybody should own a chunk of. That's all you can get. Victory at Sea, in case you're young and and, and and haven't been around on this planet for very long, was a remarkable 26-part documentary, 13 hours long in half-hour segments, that aired in October 1952, or began to air in October 1952, with a score, continuous music, all the way through by Richard Rogers, the famous Rogers and Hammerstein, you know, musical, Broadway musical guy, um, who did like, you know, like Oklahoma and The King and I and things like that. And and Robert Russell Bennett, who was famous as an orchestrator and arranger. Actually, most of the score is by Bennett, um, or so it would seem. But Richard Rogers got the credit because he was the famous one at the time. Um, it is an amazing achievement. And the two of them worked together, apparently very harmoniously and collaboratively. But the actual, the actual way they operated was very, very interesting because once the whole thing was made, um, Rogers watched it and he came up with 12 major tunes or themes that represented various recurring situations throughout the documentary. And then Bennett was responsible for creating a coherent symphonic fabric that offered musical continuity for each of the 26 episodes. So as I said, Bennett did most of the work. And there are some episodes in which Bennett did all of the work. He composed all of the music. So now it's much more uh, common when you see Victory at Sea to see Rogers and Robert Russell Bennett given more or less equal billing, although Rogers comes first because he originated most of the melodic ideas. Um, it is an extraordinary piece of music. There is no recording. I mean, normal recording of the complete score. I, I don't think all 26 hours of the soundtrack were issued. I mean, it has sound effects and things in it, and some recordings preserve those, um, which is kind of irritating, actually. Sometimes you don't want to hear crash, boom, you know, when things are blowing up and whatnot. But it was recorded quite a few times because it was very, very popular in the 1950s and into the 60s. And bits of it, like the Guadalcanal March and things like that, are, are somewhat well-known still. So I have a few recordings of it here that I thought I would tell you about just for fun. Um, there were originally three suites drawn from the big, gigantic thing that, that Richard Rogers made and which Bennett recorded. Um, and those three original recordings from the 1950s, they're all like in stereo or reasonably good sound. Um, I, you can find here on this, this is very peculiar. This is on a label called Jasmine. Um, and it has volumes one, two, and three. There's all three suites on two discs. And you don't say, it's not a word here, not a word about who is the orchestra, who is conducting. Um, but it says it's in stereo. It sounds pretty good. And uh, it's not expensive, and it's available. And, and so it, this is, at the moment, the largest clump of victory at sea that you can probably get. And, uh, you know, it's worth hearing for, for that purpose. Then there were two RCA discs on CD. They were issued on CD. There was victory at sea, and there's more victory at sea. Those are still under letter R in the overflow room. So they will pop up eventually as we paw through all of that material. But I have upstairs in the non-overflow room, this one. This is the other RCA CD reissue featuring the Vic RCA Victor Symphony Orchestra under, under Robert Russell Bennett. Um, and you get... Uh, this is most of Victory at C1, plus an extra track or so, or thereabouts. It's a selection from those other discs. And it's more than enough music. It's 72 minutes and 24 seconds of continuous, well, it has 14 tracks, but I mean continuous music, big chunks of music. And some of these things are fairly long, five minutes, six minutes, you know, because there wasn't a lot of like dialogue. I mean, this was continuous music underpinning 
a continuous action. It was the story, by the way, victory at sea, in case you didn't know, was the story of the U.S. naval victory in World War II. Um, and it's very, very extensive. It was, it was a landmark in the history of television documentaries. I mean, it used actual war footage and um, was pretty amazingly put together and exciting. And, and, and that, was, that was the deal. Yes, it was a, a, a story of triumph and heroism and patriotism. And, you know, people today might look at it and go, oh, dear. But it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. And it's a true story anyway. It was well documented. So there you go. Um, this is probably the thing to get at the moment if you can find it. And it is also, it seems to still be available. I saw it on Amazon just like minutes ago. So there you go. That's the other victory at sea. Um, and last but not least, this thing this is an LP. You remember LPs? Which I can't even play anymore, but I have it. Um, this is the suite from Victory at Sea that was put together by Charles Gerhardt with the Cinema Symphony Orchestra of London, which was also the National Philharmonic. It's all the same group. Um, and this is the reissue on, on Quintessence. Remember Quintessence? This was recorded in 1969. It's splendid sound. It's part of that Gerhardt series of stuff um, that uh, I don't know if it was originally on RCA or not, to be honest with you. It certainly wasn't originally on Quintessence. But it's it's uh, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven tracks. Not as much as this thing. So that's why you get this thing. And of course, if you, this is still bopping around if you play LPs. And of course, Charles Gerhardt was marvelous at this stuff. So it's kind of fun to reminisce. I had this um, in a different incarnation back in the LP days. Oh, my. So... There you go. That's your deal for Victory at Sea. You, if you care about film scores, or you know television scores in this case, but it's a film score, um, you really ought to hear it. It's one of the great epic symphonic scores ever created for the visual medium of film slash television, and well worth hearing for the fabulous tunes and scintillating orchestrations and wonderful, wonderful knitting together of same in, in tons and tons and tons of colorful, continuous music. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.